they refer to this article by this uh, like the MIT edu website and then they ex- explained like how the state machines actually work like the mail more machine and various type of state machine and they also show some applications over here so it like the design example is there so that way you get to know how you do it and then this is also the diagram which actually shows how it is synthesized in hardware so you will know that uh, while uh, like writing code you should always know what you are actually plan doing so if we just don't know how svj internal architecture is then we would we could have never known what was causing wrong compile times we discussed a lot like what could be going wrong in our hardware because it was taking long compile time and instructor told us that it has to do something with your code so we just go went through the internal architecture and saw such diagram so we realized that it has to do with the state machine itself these are some of the applications of how the state machine actually work this is how you derive the logic actually like for a particular task this is the logic how it is the table we learned this in digital design also but we never did the practical approach uh, for anything so here we get the practical approach for everything like this all the corn of maps etc we all learned this but uh, this is how we actually implement using a state machine when arduino we just have the library and we never know the actual execution what has happening behind the library so there is a library for the color sensor also but most of the people tend to use that like if they have used a color sensor before we hadn't so we had to just we just type the arduino color sensor and we got this and this website actually taught the internal structure of the uh, color sensor and showed how it works like there is a photo diode the frequency converter and etc and it showed us like the how to program everything like it's not the library approach it's the root level approach so that way uh, we can incorporate such things in our code so that uh, we need not depend on any library or something like that all i had uh, done before this team was program in embedded c uh, microcontrollers like everyone does and that had sort of constrained my thinking to think of uh, programs as sequential in nature so with verilog it was very different like it was an actual parallel hardware implementation of what you were writing and i was able to undertake Uh, massively parallel implementations of the algorithm that i chose i would go on to looking at the synthesis output like the schematic that is generated after synthesis i i recommend going through that schematic and comparing it that this block relates to this line of code in my design uh, it helps connect uh, the two levels together like uh, the a uh, higher level and the lower level Model sim was the easiest way for me to check my RTL code and uh, to do functional simulation and be confident that yeah this is going to work when I deploy it on the hardware. Have spares always available when you're working with the hardware because you never know that if an error is due to software or hardware. So it helps to have a spare part and in case of failure of any mechanical parts you can just replace it and get going. give most importance into the low level drivers that you develop for the hardware like for example the adc the line sensor uh, that code has to be uh, as good as possible uh, so that it does not really give you any problems in the later stages once the base was solid my life became a lot easier and while writing these low level drivers uh, i made it a point to not ignore any small errors sometimes we face some small errors and we found we find a quick fix to fix it like one line of code here and there but we don't actually know that what caused that error and that could be replicated at a later stage so one thing i made sure is to uh, always solve the errors before moving on to the next stage and to not employ any deploy any quick fixes or something which i did not fully understand i looked at intel training videos on youtube uh, the official videos that they put out and there's a channel called uh, Nine Land, where the person uh, goes through the whole process of an FPGA design, and then there's websites like Chip Verify for Verilog, and ASIC World, that is another one for Verilog, and a lot of other blogs. That for uh, audio processing, I used to mention, uh, I used to go through a blog named RTL Audio Lab. we should be careful when connecting the power connections like ground and vcc we should not uh, like swap them and connect them it will damage the entire board the first time we designed a pcb for ourselves 
when soldering on a pcb you need to be careful and have a multimeter with you always before turning on the power supply you need to check for connectivity between the components and also make sure about the connectivity across the wires it is equally important to go through the data sheets of the uh, of the particular component before they start working with the hardware so if we if they study about their specification as well as the working of the sensors or other modules that they have been provided with it will be helpful for them to design a circuit as well as make the particular component to get into working if they are trying to solder a small ic it may get burned out if they are applying too much uh, heat on the soldering soldering part for a long time so they need to be careful on this part also For the task completion sake, usually what people do just make a very calm, chill out approach. What happens is that in the later stage, they'll have to fix this problem, and while fixing this problem, will create some other problem to some other component on the chassis. So what I suggest is just look ahead of the line. I manage to put everything on the board first, check if everything is like properly balanced. Like I tried to topple it also, and it was not toppling. Wiring is the most uh, hazardous thing which can cause the board to fail at any moment of time. The jumpers were not up, uh, up to the mark; like they were causing some loose connection every time, and very random things were happening. So later we switched to the jumpers. We got some better quality ones, uh, like proper connectors, and then now we soldered everything properly through a power cord or directly using on the connector itself. And then we got every time to fix and proper out.